Elvis Presley hated the Beatles. Did he really see them as anti-American or was he threatened by their success in the British invasion? Let's explore why these cultural icons never saw eye to eye and uncover what exactly happened when they met in 1965. Hi, I'm Adam. Welcome back to Music Mongoose. Elvis was a big deal in the 60s, bigger than lava lamps. And the Beatles were too. Their impact from the British invasion put them on the global scale. These two acts became behemoths of pop culture. The Beatles had Beatlemania and Elvis was, well, he was Elvis. No other musical talent had managed to cultivate this kind of impact before. Elvis kicked it all off, of course. In the 50s, he blended gospel, rhythm and blues, country and pop into a musical cocktail and served it up as rock and roll, bringing the soul of black music to the white masses. Yeah, some might call it stealing, but we won't get into that now. And the fact he was a certified sexy, hunky man didn't hurt either. This all turned out to be an explosive combination. Elvis was more popular than sock hops or varsity jackets, whatever they are. His status as a cultural icon grew and soon he found himself at the helm of a rabid fan base. And I mean rabid. This sort of hype was only matched by Beatlemania five or so years later. Now, like a lot of people growing up in England at the time, the Beatles idolised Elvis. I mean, he was the king after all. In fact, John Lennon once famously said, nothing affected me until I heard Elvis. Without Elvis, there would be no Beatles. The Beatles even slicked back their hair in admiration of Elvis. They were enamoured by his rebelliousness and talent. And it all started with Heartbreak Hotel, the 1956 album that had a huge impact on not only the rock and roll industry, but also on John, Paul and George. They all cite this album as a huge influence. In fact, it was this album that inspired John Lennon to start a band. And thank God he did. You know how the story goes from there. The Beatles launched to stardom, all ignited by Elvis Presley. In 1964, after taking America by storm and appearing on The Ed Sullivan Show, they were asked this at a press conference. What do you think of the comment that you're nothing but a bunch of British Elvis Presley? Oh, it's not true, it's not true. <laughs> Shortly after this episode, Elvis was asked by a journalist while in California what he thought of the Beatles. He had this to say. The first time I saw them was on The Ed Sullivan Show. I wish them the best of luck over here, because if these young people can come over here and do well regardless of what crowd they impress, well, more power to them, really. Well, it all seems very amicable, doesn't it? The Beatles idolising Elvis, Elvis wishing the Fab Four well. Where does all the hatred come into play? At the start of 1964, the media went hard on a supposed rivalry between Elvis and the Beatles. No one had come close to rivaling Elvis before in record sales. And you've got to wonder whether Elvis felt threatened by this. Publicly, of course, he continued to support the Beatles, but underneath, there was something bubbling. Let's fast forward 18 months to 1965 and the first and last meeting between Elvis and the Beatles. Elvis wanted to see what all the hype was about, so he invited the Beatles round for a cuppa, a bit of cake and a right good chinwag. Probably. The Beatles, with some time off from their British invasion, planned a trip to Bel Air. Now, the phrase, don't meet your heroes, is very, very appropriate here because the meeting didn't go as smoothly as you might think. And we know this because of this chap, Tony Barrow. He was the Beatles' press officer at the time and was in attendance at the meeting. He later told the BBC that there was a deafening silence, an awkward, embarrassing silence between the five that lingered. They just faced each other and said nothing of significance. In addition to this, John Lennon, despite having idolised the man from a younger age, almost immediately insulted him upon entering his home. According to author Chris Hutchins, anyway. You see, John Lennon hated Elvis's lamps. <laughs> no, really. Elvis's lamps were engraved with slogans from President Lyndon B. Johnson. And Lennon wasn't a massive fan of Johnson. You see, President Johnson was responsible for upping the stakes in the Vietnam War, and we all know how anti-war John Lennon was. Lennon, being Lennon, probably made a snarky comment about the lamps, and Elvis, being an ardent patriot, probably didn't like it. John continued to rile Elvis up as well. Going back to Tony Barrow, he said, John asked what had happened to the old rock and roll Elvis, who at that point was mainly singing soundtracks to his films. He was half joking, but he meant it. Lennon wasn't pulling any punches. Barrow says that after all the awkwardness, the five did partake in a little jamming session, where apparently the tension simmered down a bit. 
Dunno, maybe they can communicate better through instruments than with their mouths. Although Elvis and the Beatles appear to get along following this meeting for the sake of the public eye, under the surface, they avoided crossing paths ever again. They had not made a great impact on each other. In fact, it later emerged that Elvis thought the Beatles were a force for immorality in America, and that they were destroying the country's cultural fabric. A 1970 meeting between Elvis and President Nixon was recorded by a lawyer, and Elvis said this, The Beatles had been a real force for anti-American spirit, and the Beatles came to this country, made their money, and then returned to England, where they promoted an anti-American theme. This wasn't a one-off either. Elvis was very keen to spread this message. A year later, he had a tour of the FBI offices, as you do. Elvis reportedly said this to FBI director J. Edgar Hoover. The Beatles laid the groundwork for many of the problems we're having with young people by their filthy, unkempt appearances and suggestive music. And going back to the author Chris Hutchins, he claimed that Elvis got pally-pally with the FBI's director to try to encourage him to kick John Lennon out of America. Did Elvis really see the Beatles as an embodiment of anti-America, though? Or was he just threatened by their monumental success? Maybe he was worried he wouldn't be the king anymore. And the poor Beatles had another rivalry to contend with during all of this back home in England, with the Rolling Stones. You can click this video to find out all about that. And I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose. Bye now! Bye bye.